Hey guys, this is CubeHeads101, and today I'm going to be showing you how to solve the last layer of a Rubik's Cube without using any algorithms. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you in particular how to orient the edges of the last layer. So, for instance, this cube on the last layer, two edges are not flipped up, while on this cube, all of the edges are flipped up. So our goal in this video is to turn any last layer case into this last layer case, or something that looks similar to it, where all the edges are flipped up correctly. So the technique we're going to be doing um, in order to flip up edges is we're going to put some edges on the front face and then do a front turn to change their orientation. So if you're already familiar with the ZZ method, you might find this pretty straightforward. If not, you're going to be able to learn just fine from this tutorial. So first I'm going to show you how to do it if no, no edges are flipped up whatsoever. So I'm going to flip up, um, or flip down rather, all the edges on this cube. And now you should see that this is the yellow side, it's our last layer, and none of the edges are pointing upwards with yellow. So we need to flip all of the edges. Now, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to first decide which we want to be our front side, which side we want to keep in front. In this case, I'm going to use red in front. Um, and once you've decided what your front color is going to be, you have to continuously hold the cube that way and don't make any front or back turns unless uh, it's completely necessary. So the reason for this is if we have an edge on the front or on the back and we do a front turn, then if we don't do any more front turns, it's impossible to return that edge to the same place it was at before with the same orientation it was at. For instance, this edge, because yellow is facing out, if I bring it there, bring it across, and bring it back up, now yellow is facing up. So we change the orientation with one front turn. So the way we're going to flip edges one at a time is we're going to put one bad edge, one edge that needs to be flipped on the front, and keep another bad edge next to it. So this is pretty easy right here. We have this bad edge, which needs to be flipped up, and this bad edge right there, which also needs to be flipped up. And the way we're going to flip up both of these is by doing a front turn to change the orientation of this edge, and then replace it with another edge that needs to have its orientation changed and then do another front turn. And so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to explain to you the exact reasoning behind this. So like I just explained, after you do a front turn, if you don't do another front or back turn, all the edges on the front face when you turned it essentially change their orientation. That is, if I try to move an edge back to the same place it was at before without doing a front or back turn, it will have an, the opposite orientation. So we have four edges on the front face, and three of them are from our F2L. Now, if we do a front turn with one bad edge on the front face, we've now created three bad edges and one good edge. So we have to fix these F2L edges again by doing another front turn to, to restore them, essentially, to the orientation they were at before. But of course, if we do that, it's pointless, you know, because we, we've just also changed this one. So to bypass that, we can only fix two at a time. We do a front turn. So now this edge is good. These three are bad. Then we replace it with a bad edge that also needs to be flipped up. And then we do another front turn, restoring these F2L pieces, and it fixed those two edges. Now, the problem is, when we've just done this, we broke our F2L. And this is where having an, a good intuition for Frederick F2L is necessary. So if you can't already solve the first two layers intuitively, you're going to be at a loss now. So what we, what we see here is that we have this F2L pair right down there, and then this nice little block there. So if we do now, that was an R turn, and we have to remember that red is our front face, so we're not going to do any more front turns until we fix the F2L. Now I can reinsert this F2L pair by bringing it over, bringing this up, bringing it across, and bringing it back down. And so now you can see, after we've done all that, that our first two layers are back intact, and we have flipped up two edges, and they're now opposite each other. Now, we're going to use the same technique again to fix these two edges. And essentially, to fix these two edges, we're going to 
Put one onto the front face, turn it up, replace it with the other one, then turn it the opposite way. And I'm just going to show you this, and hopefully after practicing this a couple times, you'll be able to pick it up. So here's a bad edge. I'm going to do it to the left side. You could also do it to the right side. It doesn't matter. It's symmetric. So I'll bring that guy down. It's now on the front face. I do a front turn, replace it with the other bad edge, and then I do another front turn. And now we have this guy right here, this F2L thing, and we have this F2L pair right here. So I'm going to hold it with red in front, because remember, now that we've fixed those two edges, we don't want to do any more front or back turns. So now I'm going to only use the up face and the left face to put this F2L pair back where it belongs and bring that back down. So that's essentially how to orient the edges of the last layer. Now there's, of course, one more case, um, which is when you have the edges are next to each other that need to be flipped. Here are the edges that need to be flipped, and they're next to each other, as you can see. So this is a very similar edge case for flipping them up. You just, this, face, this one is already on the front face. If it, was, if it was something like this, you would have to choose which one you want to put on the front face. I put this one on the front face. Then I'm going to knock it down so it's correct, replace it with the other bad edge, bring it back up the opposite way. And now here's our F2L pair. Here's our block. So in order to insert the F2L pair back in, we can do that. So that was pretty straightforward if you are good at intuitive F2L. If not, like I, uh, like I will say, just check out a ZZ tutorial or a, a Frederick F2L tutorial or even a Petrus tutorial. And I'll find links on how to do intuitive F2L that I can put in the description. But this video is primarily assuming that you are good at intuitive F2L um, and you're willing to take the next step into intuitive last layer. So that was the first step. That was how to orient the edges. And in the next section, I'm going to be showing you how to orient the corners.